All right, so we're going to go ahead and start. This is me. This is like a clacker clicker board. Clacker clicker, clacker Just, clicker. Wait, wait, wait. And what? Not yet. <laughs> okay, one, two, not three, and then I'll make a loud noise. Love and then it. you'll be able to see that at the sound wave. Do it. One. Ha! <laughs> That's not Dude, we should work out again. again. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make Dude, the, the gag the reel is going to be awesome from this one. Well, here we are. <laughs> uh, why don't we not talk for a second and then start? I think we should just start with that. I mean, Honestly. You really can't get much better than that. Welcome back to the Dewey Decibel System. This is us. <laughs> this is what we do. This is a podcast where we talk about things. Stuff and things. Having a good time already. Yep. I'm April. Oh, I'm Brandon. Hi. And I'm going to start going by C now. Because C. <laughs> you so should. Because the redundant letters. You Hashtag so 18th should. century hipster. That's right. right on. Seabear and Jamal. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> you guys remember that? Who? No, I don't remember Seabear that. Seabear and Jamal was a Saturday morning cartoon show uh, starring the voice talent of Tone Loke from um, the Wild Thing fame. I, what you know, is well? life? I've never yeah. heard of this. From the um, early 90s, the Tone Loke, you know the guy. Yeah, was, yeah, he, was, yeah. he was the cool, rapping hipster, hipster, I guess not hipster, but the yeah, bear. Hipsters didn't exist then. I mean, they did, but they so did. They were just not. interesting how this ties into what I'm going to talk about later. <laughs> it's a sub- subculture. It's Memory. a subculture, yeah. <laughs> you guys should all, you should. <laughs> That's the 20th century hipster. <laughs> YouTube, Sea Bear and Jamal, it's good. Sea Bear and Jamal, okay. Well, Sorry. speaking of Sea Bear and Jamal, or that's know, an interesting segue, right? And it right. really isn't one. I really need coffee for that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we all do. We are we are totally. It's on a our Monday game morning, today, folks. Right? Mm. It's, it's early, a Monday early morning. On a Monday. Well, so today I'm going to talk about guilty pleasures. Yay! Dude, how exciting! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I told you. It'll take I mean, forty minutes. Oh, it's the end no. of the summer. Today is actually the last day of summer reading, which is our big. <gasps> summer long program. Yeah. The kids are going to go back to school very, very soon, which if you're a parent, you're probably August really excited about. <laughs> so so excited. Um, my kids yeah. are even excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure my kids are. are even like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm I was ready to pretty go. excited at this point. Yeah. Back in the day, 100 well, years ago, when I was in school. This has been an incredibly long summer for us. Yeah. I mean, normally, I remember one. Uh, a couple years ago, summer w- summer break for the kids was like seven weeks. That was the yeah. shortest I've ever w- I've ever seen. They've probably already been off seven weeks. Oh, now. oh, easily this. this well, yeah, summer yeah, because is it's been a eight weeks, full yeah. twelve weeks. That's a long time, and that's longer than I remember it being when I was a kid. That's a long time for them to be off. Yeah, get them back yeah. in school. They're they're ready. <laughs> they're ready. <laughs> Do you guys remember the Disney character um, Russell from the film Up? No. <laughs> No, no, I haven't seen Up. I though. love Up. So oh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Up is good, but Russell was me, in, in some <laughs> ways, very much still is. I was wearing my Boy Scout uniform, kicking down the school doors on the first day of school. <laughs> Let me in. Let me at him. Like. Where's the textbook? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just gonna say nerd okay, alert. So speaking of like cartoon characters that we are. At one point, <laughs> it's a topic oh, for next time. <laughs> this is yeah. This is this is a topic for next time, but. I don't know why this made me think of it, but I have always sworn that I'm going to go as Carl from Jimmy Neutron for Halloween one year. <laughs> this is my inhaler. With your hair, you could do Carl hair. Right? I see it. Right? Like, hard. Just twist That's it into, ring, into ringlets and put it all on top of my head. That's good. Russell uh, from Huff, by the way, is me. Yeah, it will happen one day. So, yeah. So, it's the end of summer. Obviously, we aren't making any sense. So right. So, you know that we're tired. Yeah, um, yeah. right. Yeah. And there are times where you summer. just don't want to think. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I find that that's me often. Mm. Like, after a big period of you know, busyness and stressfulness and yeah. all that, mm. I just want to come home and not have to engage. So... Brandon and I actually one it, night we were Facebook messaging. <laughs> oh my! <geez. laughs> I know oh where this is going God. about a show called <laughs> Teen Mom. Oh, and I mean, people give me so much grief over my love of the show. It's on I MTV. Have never seen it. It's a real testament to how much I trust you, and now <laughs> all of that trust has now been broken. I'm <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, no. So, well, I mean, I'm here with you though. So it's, it's me and you both. Very good. I'm not just calling you. It's out. okay. Wait till you. Sh- wait till I share mine. Teen Mom so, so much. It's so good. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, people Mine's give me so much grief. They're just like, how can you watch that show? It's mm. on MTV, and there's a few unsavory characters on there. 
But I mean, there's also some redemption to it. I mean, yeah, there's yeah, interesting right. okay. storylines. See, April doesn't believe I have, it. No, I have, I have never seen <laughs> April's it because there I'm judging. Like, I, I am. Guys, judgy, I'm judging. judgy April. Judging, over there. Judging, you could judging. just skip the the entire, I think, first season and just watch the like retrospective on the first season. That way, you'd get all the Actually, redemption. You could just watch one episode right. and they go back <laughs> and true, show so much right. that you wouldn't even need to <laughs> catch so, up. Okay, right, if they true. didn't show like all of the things that had happened in the past, how long would these episodes actually be whoa well i know that for a fact that they'd be about 35 minutes long because i watch on the <laughs> treadmill sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so do i so do i well okay yeah, you man. just get lost yeah. i mean you get totally lost in what's going on with these people mm-hmm. it's true. and i don't know if the guilty pleasure part is i get to shut my own life off for a minute hmm. and look at other people's lives i think that's maybe an element of hmm. any well, kind I, of guilty I pleasure think that mm-hmm. think, think sat think sat Okay. Take that. Hashtag think, think that. <laughs> Hashtag no more Monday morning recording. Yeah, I know <laughs> Hashtag <sure>. agree. <laughs> Hashtag too many hashtags. <laughs> but the other element that I really found intriguing with my talk with Brandon over Facebook Messenger, I mean, like we were, <laughs> we were it was like midnight. Jokes. <laughs> I got, oh, yeah. I got in on it some of it, but like I vicariously, mean, <laughs> we were making these jokes, and I was. I was crying laughing over what we were talking about, which is not safe for work, so I'm not going to say it on the podcast. (laughs) For sure. And I don't want to sit here and, you know, gossip about people that are on TV because Mm -hmm. whatever. But it's so much fun. They might be listening. (laughs) They probably will. Or fans of the show will call us out. Don't, yeah, don't they have cr- a don't yeah, bias. Yeah, they have a very fan rabid base, yeah. fan base. It's true. We love yeah, you, Teen Mom there. fan base. Right. Is it their yeah. fandom? Mm-hmm. It's their fandom. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, Lord. But their fandom tends to go on like Twitter and all that and just totally harass people. It's very oh. true. So I don't want mm-hmm. any part of that. So yeah, what I do want to talk about is me and Brandon talked about how it was embarrassing to basically reveal that we like this show. Mm-hmm. And I it just was realized that based like on our conversation, you stole my topic. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I said, I'm seriously considering making guilty pleasures my next topic. Oh. <laughs> you stole it. <laughs> I have no, I don't it's okay. remember. I just realized sorry. that. You guys, okay. the, the magic that's going to happen, Cece, you just said, I don't remember. The magic that's going to happen when I get to my portion of this at the end, <laughs> I promise you, like there's really <laughs> something happening here in this podcast. Please continue. Yes, I'm sorry. I interrupted. But no, I where that. I wanted to go with this was... Why do we feel like it's not okay to reveal guilty pleasures? Because Brandon and I were like, it's almost like we're at a speakeasy yeah. where <laughs> we just revealed some code. And now <gasps> we're like, oh, my God, we're closer now. So true. Because we have this it's so true. Have stupid bond, thing we just... like in mm-hmm. common. You know? Yeah, dude. God, I don't even. Hmm. I mean, we see it here all the time. I mean, people come oh, up yeah. and they check out, say, hmm. I don't know, the first shades of, of gray the OC or something, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, right. And they're like, I, I can't believe I like this. Please don't judge me. I mean, yes. why would I judge? I go yeah. home and watch Teen Mom, <laughs> Yeah, <heck laughs> you yeah. know, exactly. Right. <laughs> well, you know, like a, a friend of mine is a huge fan of the Fifty Shades of Grey books. Mm. And, you know, on one hand, I feel like don't judge somebody for what they read or anything like that. And yet sometimes when I see somebody reading something, I'm just look at them and go, wow, I'm totally judging you. But Mm -hmm. it's all in my head, of course. I'm not saying this out loud. Sure, because we would never judge. Because we would never judge. We don't do that. (laughs) Hashtag totally lying. (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag never judge. Hashtag Hashtag no, but really. (laughs) But but really, it's so interesting. (laughs) Oh, my God, it's a Monday. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so so we, we try really hard not to judge. And then we turn around and, you know, one of my guilty pleasures, I hate, hate to admit it, Twilight. Oh yeah, <laughs> man! Listen, but it's completely I cannot mindless. read the book. Oh man! I can, I can watch it, or I can listen to it, and I, or I can read it, and I can shut my brain off, and I don't have to think. Yeah, and I'm not saying too much. I think about Stephanie Meyer may have shut her brain off also. Oh, <laughs> I know. yeah, I know. Sorry. Totally not judging. <laughs> love, love yeah. Twilight. Yeah, but but, but no, yeah. seriously, and I'm, I and I'm actually kind of embarrassed to, to admit that it is Twilight, but it, that is one of my guilty pleasures because I don't have to think. You're absolutely right. At the end of a long day or a long busy period, mm-hmm. I mean, <clears throat> part of the reason I'm gravelly this morning is because I had a busy last five days there was work and then there was something going on every evening and then over the weekend the exact same thing something going on all day and then something in the evening so i'm worn out but at the end of a long busy period like that you just want to shut your brain off and not think yeah do you guys want to hear my twilight story yes Yes. so 
Twilight COVID involves Robert Pattinson. It absolutely 100% yes. involves Rob Pat, no doubt. So uh, Twilight became a phenomenon. I can't remember exactly. It was maybe 2009, 2010. I can't remember when the movie came out. I have no idea. And this was at the height of, of Twi, Twi Hard fandom, right? Oh, Twi Hard. <coughs> yeah. That, did you just make that up? Or Twi Hard. No, Twi Hard. Oh, no, no, Twi Hard. Yeah. That is yeah. what their fandom is called. No doubt. Yeah. Twi Hard. Twi Hard. So I was not one of them. In fact, I was one of the people <laughs> in the wings pointing and laughing and being very judgy, right? Mm hmm. And uh, my girlfriend at the time drug me so begrudgingly to the film, the first Twilight film. And you, I mean, the the bullets that I was shooting at this, <laughs> at this, uh, uh, t- um, at this cultural phenomenon, and at the people who loved it were just like you know huge flaming, uh, just golden bullets. Anyway, halfway through the movie, there's a scene where Rob Pat is in K Stu's uh, bedroom. Rob Pat. Right? Yeah. Right? Just right? Even right now. He's got the vernacular. <laughs> and, they share, and they share a kiss, and they share these pensive looks. And you guys, in the movie theater, I was getting like in my neck and collarbone. I was getting flushed. And I was like, I was going to ask if you two, cried. These two I, I, have I, some, I was expecting him to cry. I, I, That's what I was expecting. I was like, these two have some chemistry. Like, it was, it was like a meaningful, moving, quite frankly, very steamy scene. And I went home <laughs> and read that night the whole first book. This is very true. <laughs> wow. Well, it's a quick read. My <laughs> girlfriend at the time had you don't the book. Have to think. Yeah. So I became a bit of a Twihard person for a little while. I feel so much better now. That's pretty <laughs> pretty much the whole story. But no, for real. Like I get, and I think it all happened in the movie theater when Robert Patton, Pattinson kissed Case Kri- Stu. I don't know. All right. I feel yeah. like Teen Mom's still worse. Oh, for sure. I, I, <laughs> Not even a question. I, I don't have, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what else like I, I mean, really mine are can't awful. Think. Like Teen Mom. All I know that the mine are bad. Housewives I mean, I series. know that mine are bad, but I don't. Yeah. I can't think. Uh, the Great British Baking Show. That's my. That's like my obsession. I have a friend who, um, speaking of things that make us cry, she okay. cries watching that show. That okay. Is it because it looks so good? Is she a no, baker? No, I think that she. Or does she get? She, she gets likes involved how in the nice they are. Oh, like they're really like yeah. encouraging of people. I guess I've never watched it. Before. They are. It, it's it's a great show. It, it it's it's reality television that is unlike any reality television that we have here in the U.S. Mm. that I know of anyway. Because they are nice and they're supportive, mm-hmm. and it's not, it's really refreshing to see. But at the same time, I'm like, come on, somebody sabotage <laughs> somebody's <laughs> cane. <laughs> <laughs> but then at the same time, you would hate that person because these people, are, <laughs> like these are just regular people, and they are investing their time oh, and yeah. their money. And it's real the the camaraderie that they have is really great. Is cake sabotage a thing that actually happens on this show? No, well, not intentionally. There, it, it has happened. <laughs> like somebody accidentally like grabbed the wrong bowl out of the fridge because they've got all of these fridges that uh, around this tent that they use, mm-hmm. and they have to share them. Mm-hmm. Um. And so it's happened where. Uh, someone grabbed the wrong bowl out of the fridge. They grabbed the other person's, and then like something got messed up. Mm-hmm. And then in the very first season, I guess you could s- definitely say that this is one of my guilty pleasures. It's no, not right. really I, I'm pleasure. hearing it, man. It's just a pleasure. I'm I hearing love it. it. Hashtag it's just a pleasure. I'm going to stop <laughs> hashtagging now. <laughs> we have to. We have to. Um, but um, there was Same a with in, Robert in, Pattinson. In, sorry. <laughs> in the first season, there's a, one of the contestants. His name is Ian. His, he, they're making baked Alaska. And so he's got this ice. They've got ice cream that they have to create and then all these other flavors for the sponge cake and then the meringue and all this stuff. And they have to design it and make it look and neat. I think it was their showstopper. And his ice cream never set. <laughs> It never set. And so he ended up throwing the entire thing oh, away. Man. And so when they go up to the judges to present their creation, he just brings the trash can up. Aww. Oh, dude. And you, your heart just broke for him because he was doing so well yeah. up until that point. And I guess he just let the pressure get to him. Yeah. And it was hot that day. I mean, they're in this tent and it's air right. conditioned, but it's still it's right. outside in the summer. It's England, but it's still outside in the summer. And uh, it, they, he did get eliminated because he didn't have anything to present. Poor dude. And it was just... He had a trash can full of melted <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> and think. it looked really interesting. It was like poppy seed ice cream. I don't know how oh. that would have worked, but it was mm. interesting. Hmm. Yeah. It sounds yummy, though. Yeah. I can see how my friend cries then because... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get really invested really in their stories. Yeah. And yeah. Th- they're... It's just a great show. I love it. And then it's also inspired me to bake. And so I have started doing all of these different challenges myself where I'm baking my way through the seasons and trying different things. Sweet. And you know, I'm not inspired to do much by uh, watching Teen Mom. 
<laughs> I'm inspired to watch more Teen Mom <laughs> <right>. for sure. <laughs> no, dude, I could lose an entire. I shouldn't say could. I have mm-hmm. lost entire mm-hmm. days. Oh yeah. For sure, just catching up on it. Me too, and screaming yeah. at the TV. Yeah. Why, come on, yeah. is a big thing. That's oh, right. I just realized another one of mine. Gilmore Girls. Oh man, that's like one for Gilmore lots Girls. of people. I love Gilmore yeah. Girls. What is it? Can, so, if I may ask, okay. it, as somebody who's I've never seen a second of the Gilmore Girls te- television program. Okay, w- but but I have like this almost like nostalgic sense for it anyway, which is weird. Like yeah, it feels like yeah. a homey comfortable like Saturday afternoon in the fall kind of a show like what's yeah, exactly. that about well, it, because it's exactly ha- yeah. it has yeah. that feel okay it's a Saturday afternoon right. a small town in New England okay and it's, you know a lot of things it's happen in the actually fall actually perpetually fall I it's, think there um <laughs> I wouldn't say perpetually, but <laughs> frequently. <laughs> like frequently fall. Always falling. Le- is it yeah. Stars Hollow? Stars Hollow. Yeah. You yeah. want to live in Stars, Stars Hollow. Hollow. If you want to, yeah. if you're going to go and live in a small town, this is what you imagine small town life. Would I'd be. rather live in Forks, Washington. See, I never frankly, watched it. <laughs> you mm-hmm. rather mm-hmm. live in Forks, Washington, where Edward that's where, is. That's where Twilight takes place. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where Edward is. That's where Edward, where Edward, Edward is. Oh, okay. Hashtag. Sorry. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! This is yeah, two I never of watched it. I know, right? <laughs> Al- already, always. <laughs> I never watched it as a not a kid. We weren't kids. We were no, like but like as 20. it was airing on right. TV. Yeah, I think I was in college. I guess I watched it I, this yeah. year, high school, yeah. and college. <laughs> That's when I watched it as well. Like when mm-hmm. it you know dropped on Netflix, and I got through a couple seasons. There's a lot of episodes. Mm. Yeah, mm. like twenty. I think I, per I a lot. And oh, they're wow. an hour long. And oh wow, I don't like to sit still for a long time. So right. But I feel like I felt very nostalgic for it as well without even knowing a thing about it. Right, you know? right. For Weird. us, too, it's very 90s. Mm-hmm. It's very, nice. very, very 90s. Either it came out in like off. 2005, or did it end in uh, 2005? You know, I don't know. I'm looking it up. I'm, I'm, I am our research person, yeah. mostly because I have the computer in front of me. Come on, check it out. But I started watching it. I hated it. I would not watch like when it first came on when it first came on and then with it being on netflix i would not watch it why the the character the character of Mm lorelei drove (laughs) me crazy the only thing i know is that she talks fast she does she does talk fast they both talk fast Uh they do and there's a lot lot of interrupting okay oh no we we are just (laughs) yeah (laughs) we know nothing to complain that there's a lot of interrupting in the show Hmm. yeah fair point (laughs) sorry Um, but the the character of Lorelai just drove me nuts. Could not stand her. Hmm. And so Katie, my daughter, would be watching it. And I'd be, oh, my God, I can't believe you're watching this. I walked <laughs> through it. And so then, finally, I was like, okay, fine. I sat down and started watching it. And I fell in love with the show, with the ensemble. I mean, at first, I was like, okay, fine. I'll just watch it, and I'll just just muscle through the, the parts with Lorelai and Rory because it drove me crazy. And then you got invested in their right. story. Mm, yeah, and no then, doubt. Of right. course, you know. Right. And, but the, the ensemble, the rest of the supporting cast, mm. they're so much fun. Didn't yeah. Melissa McCarthy get her start yes, on much. Gilmore I Girls? So, that yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, I right on. So. She rocks. But uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. And then as I'm watching it, you know, we were talking earlier about what cartoon character we are. Oh, yeah. This always happens. Mm-hmm. We're watching this, and my mom, or my, I, I, was, I would, Katie would be watching it, and I'd walk through, oh my God, I can't believe you're watching this. Why do you hate this show? You are Lorelai. <laughs> well, that's probably say, why I hate it. <laughs> I feel like you and I texted while we were both watching I the show for the first we time. Did. Yeah. I think we did. I think we did. And um, so I, I decided to watch it before A Year in the Life came out, which, yeah. A Year in the Life I was never okay. watched that. I watched it. It was. It, they did a musical, and I'm a, a, mu- oh, a theater no. person, and they did no, 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 not the episode, but there was a musical within the sh- okay, the year oh, of the okay, life good. thing. I oh. thought you meant like the Grey's Anatomy. No, you know the please Grey's Anatomy no, musical? Buffy. I did not see that. Please but Buffy, no. I'm remembering Buffy. In the no, musical no, why? No, stop. No. <laughs> oh, oh, it's guilty, but it's not Grey's a pleasure. Anatomy? The, uh, that's the episode? only episode of Grey's Anatomy I've actually oh, seen in oh, my life. No. Somebody I've sat me seen, down. I didn't even know there was one. Put Does a no shot one in here watch Grey's? I watched the first season, Just but the it was one. with my ex, so I kind of okay. stopped after that. Just the one. I stopped after they brought back a character that had died, and it was like what? a ghost character 
and he was still involved with the alive nurse that he fell in love with. Was it one of the mix? So sorry, doctor that he fell in love with. Was it McSteamy or McDreamy? No, no. it was it, it was McGhosty. Denny, it was Denny. Denny. I was like, I was like Denny Craig. Was a that patient. is the wrong show. He was a patient <laughs> that had died. Yeah, and he fell in love with one of the residents. And, and they brought him back as a ghost. McGhosty. Yes. And she, like, hmm. dated, if you can call it that, the ghost <laughs> of Denny. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Just please tell me they, they did, made pots or something, like, did pottery. No, they didn't do that. <laughs> like, it was just, yeah, it was real bad. No, oh, I should get the pottery. Ghost. <laughs> oh, my love. <laughs> yes. McSteamy. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, so I love, um, I, I love the Gilmore Girls. I guess that would be another guilty pleasure. I couldn't, like, Twilight was the only one that came to mind when it, this, as a, I was like, what are my guilty pleasures? Most of mine would be like food items or something. Like oh, that. totally. Yeah, Me yeah, too. Even Can't even. Yeah. For sure. On All right. So thanks, April. Like if Cheetos. I may. Uh, Domino's Pizza has these awesome subs. That's, oh, what yeah? I, that's the guilty thing that I don't yeah. want to confess that I go home when I unplug. I just want to order one of these cheese and bacon Domino's Pizza subs. And it's like I want to eat it in a corner of my house. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, you know, like, uh, like, I'm the par- like I'm the pariah of my <laughs> do- own domain, even if there's nobody else in the house, just like alone shouting at the corner. <laughs> For some reason, I'm wearing like rags. <laughs> Like Charles, you're sitting in the corner. Like I'm a, a poor child on the street in the wintertime in a Dickens novel. Just <laughs> that's when you ask Domino just to leave it on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> Special instructions: just leave just it on the, on the porch, porch and walk away. And it's so easy <laughs> now. You with two clicks on your phone, oh, you no. can. They yeah. remember how fat I am and <laughs> and the, the sub that I want, and it's on its way to my house with this cool little tracker bar, so that oh, I know yeah, how much yeah, time. Yeah, I know how yeah. much time I have to turn my living room into 18th century <laughs> London. <laughs> you know, like. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. So that's my thing. I, that that and B-movies. I really like B-movies. Like un- uh, unintentionally bad B-movies. Yes. Right. Like Sharknado. Like Sharknado <laughs> or Samurai Cop. Have you guys ever heard of Samurai no. Cop? I have heard of it. I oh, have not seen April, it. April, I have it on Blu-ray. I will happily loan you Samurai yes, Cop. Yes, please. Yes, please. Samurai Cop is a film from 1991 <clears throat> that was filmed, a very low budget in California, and uh, and then forgotten about. Totally forgotten about. Never got a release. Never had a premiere. Uh, until it was like dredged up by the Redditors and the internet people mm-hmm. like five years ago or less. It stars a guy named Matt Hannon, who for half of the filming had this luscious, long natural um, mane of of hair. However, <clears throat> there were extensive reshoots called for after he had cut his hair, so he had to wear a woman's wig for... But what does this, it look like a woman's wig? Oh, Cece. Oh, Sea Bear. <laughs> sea Bear. <laughs> oh, Sea Bear. Yeah. So what this... It results in uh, um, in these these crazy edits and these, these, these cuts where in one scene... In, in in within the confines of just one scene, Matt Hannon will have his very clearly natural hair, and then it'll cut right back to him, and he'll be wearing this horrible woman's <laughs> wig. Oh, that's incredible! Like a mannequin in a store. It's hysterical. It's really really funny. It is definitely R rated for our audience. Uh, parents don't show it to your kids. Up, for sure, it's uh, yeah amazing. It's awesome. Along that vein, a movie that I have not seen but would really really like to. That uh, kind of came across my my radar. Norwegian Ninja. Norwegian Ninja. I Just want look it. at the poster. I and want I, it already. Based on that poster, wow. I I really really want wow. to watch this. I don't know anything who's about the, it. Who's the man in the front there? I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know anything about it other than the poster. It's some, I came across my Facebook feed years ago or something, and I just I need to watch it. I don't know anything about it other than what I have seen on the poster. It, it's just, join us, be a ninja. Okay. I want it. <laughs> it reminds me of the, the Nazis in the snow. There's this other... So there's this... Oh, it's, I have heard of that. It's, I can't remember. It's, it might just be called Snow Nazis. I'm uh, not no, 100% like, sure. Uh, it might be Snow Nazis, actually. Mark, do you know the Is title? It? Mark's looking up the title. Yeah, I'm not... I can't remember, but it was good. I've seen it. Um, there's this trend, though, of these days... I think it's because people making money in the film industry know that there are people like me out there. <laughs> What's it called? Did you find it's it? It's based on a book. 
Snow Nazis? No, no, no. I'm sorry, Norwegian Ninja. I'm still on that. No, 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 no. The film, based on a 2006 book, presents real-life espionage convicted Arne Treholt as the leader of what? a ninja group. Yeah, what? saving Norway during the Cold War and what? stars Mads, I have Mads Ostal as Treholt. That's from Wikipedia. I mean, wow. it's Wikipedia, but... Wikipedia is reasonably trustworthy Reason- for Reasonably this. trustworthy. A Norwegian Ninja. Now Norwegian I'm Ninja. Now I have to see for this. For sure. Now I have to. So, okay, I want to say the I've seen the cover of the movie you're talking about with the not the zombie oh, the, yeah. Na- is it it's, zombie Nazis? It's a good decapitated Nazis? zombie's head yeah, in, in the, the snow. snow and yeah. it's bloody and I've, I've seen gratuitous. It's called Dead Snow. Dead Snow. Dead Snow. Dead snow. Uh, yes. Because yes. of gotcha. course it is, right? Sure. Yes, of course. Right. Zombie movies or zombie anything is another guilty pleasure. I oh, me too. Hardcore, stuff. hardcore. George Romero, big rest in peace. Walking Dead break, though. Mm. Oh, it I did to be too, too much mm. for me. Mm. Yeah, I did actually. I think season three. I'm not. You know, it says a lot about a series when I finish it. <laughs> yeah, mm. same. Here, here, yeah, I'll drink really to that. Does. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It says a lot about it when I finish it because if yeah. I lose interest or I get bored, I'll usually about season two or three. I just go. You know what? I'm not worried about it. Mm. I do plan to go back and finish watching The Walking Dead, but I'm waiting for them to finish it mm-hmm. yeah. so that I can just, so you can just watch the whole it. thing. I don't yeah. have the patience for mm. waiting. I'm Same. watching Game of Thrones right now as Same. In, uh, the current season as it comes it's out. So good. I'm dying. Yeah. I'm so good. <laughs> I'm dying. Shame of Thrones. Okay. All right. Did you guys watch last night? Yep. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> never mind. Are I you? Uh, oh, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, because one of yeah. So good. Last night's episode, I will not go into too much detail, but last night's episode at, had one of the most beautifully acted scenes I have seen in the entire series to date. Let's oh. see what actors were in it. The like um, Jamie mm-hmm. and um, oh um, Tyrell, yeah, no doubt for yeah. sure. The end That's scene, the end scene, yeah, that yeah, final yeah, for scene sure. Was it was beautiful. Beautiful. I was sitting was on my couch being written. like, "Say it, tell him, say it, yes. tell him, yes, yes, yes. yes. right, for yes, sure. yes." I, I really truly Agreed. was. <laughs> Sorry for all my popped teas into the microphone. Yeah. But that scene, it was beautifully written. It was marvelously sh- shot, and then it was beautifully acted as well. It was just fantastic. And the reason I say it was marvelously shot is because it was so simple. Mm. They just did it in such a simple way. It was just these two actors mm. in the set in, and just doing the scene. And it was, it was beautiful. It was just marvelously done. So, you guys, can I talk about the Mandela effect? Please. Okay, this, yeah, we'll just get straight to you. That's a horrible. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were. <laughs> by all means, please, 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 please. No, no, no. It's mm, fine. It's mm. fine. <laughs> well, maybe you can. We can interweave it like it, like interweave. a helix. This, yeah, okay, yeah. great, great. Let's helix our topics. Do y'all know what the Mandela effect is? I actually don't. So Mark is already just blowing. He's uh, really, really. I'm super I duper. I know what it is because of Mark. Right on. I know that you emailed about it, but I yeah. want us to be as organic as we can. Totally so, right. Yeah. So I'm super. I almost don't want to know until right now. Awesome. Well, that's a good practice anyway. It's. I'm super into it because it's like a. So it's a psychological phenomenon that people culturally, <clears throat> cross-culturally, large groups of people are misremembering things, cult- cultural happenings or mm-hmm. big cultural I- iconic things. They're misremembering them, but they're misremembering them collectively. Hmm. Okay, so I'll give you an example. We are the champions, my friends. We'll keep on fighting till the end. We are the champions. We are the champions. We are the champions. What you can't see no is time for losers, but we are the champions. Well. There is, I, I, you I, know, I, I know, okay. I know about this one. Great. I, know about I this don't. One. We all want to sing of the world. I hope somebody listening to this yes, podcast yes. wanted to sing that. That yeah. doesn't yeah. exist. Really? It, it just n- ends. It just we ends. So do we, are we the ones that add of the world? So there are a couple theories. Okay. It's named, just really quickly to give you guys a little bit of background for those people who care. It's named after this, this, this. Example. It's an exemplar of the Mandela effect where many people misremember that Nelson Mandela um, died in the 80s when, in fact, he did not at all die it, while in prison in the 80s. He died mm-hmm. on December 5th, 2013. Right. Um, but many, many people are, are, you know, would say that, that he did. Mark's one of them, apparently. Um, so. <clears throat> Wait, I feel like Mark is like a Mandela truther or something. Oh, <laughs> he is. <laughs> he oh, is. So when, I re- when I found out that Brandon was talking about out. this, I was just in waiting waiting for Mark to find out and knowing that he can't talk. So you think that he <laughs> actually did indeed die in prison and then like oh, a you think it's like doppelganger? Cover-ups and stuff? Oh, like no, no, the, not, not like that. Not like that. But 
The <laughs> Illuminati? <laughs> I was just going to say the Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the you know, theories... There's people out there that think stuff like this. Though. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. I listen to a lot of true crime like podcasts. It's totally. another guilty pleasure of mine. Right. Mm-hmm. And they spend episodes on the whole truther movements for all the big things that have happened, you know. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, saying that the Illuminati replaced... Nelson a Mandela. dead Nelson Mandela with a doppelganger. <laughs> it's probably a theory on the internet somewhere. I'm sure it's a theory somewhere you know on Reddit. What? Right. I, I'm almost afraid to search for that. Right. Not out. on your library computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not sure. do that on my library computer. Hashtag not on a watch list. <laughs> 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 so the Berenstein Bears. Do you, do you guys know how to spell? Cece, may I ask you, how would you spell Berenstein? B-E-R... Wait, hold on. Sorry, B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. Okay, so that's what most people would think, that it's E-I-N. Yeah. It's never been E-I-N. Really? It's Baron Stain, A-I-N. Mm-hmm. What? Stan and Jan Barons. Now, I don't know how they per- perhaps pronounce their last name, but they could have said Baron Stein. You've ruined my childhood. I know, right? Well, no, because like, I used to love those books so much. Sure, mm-hmm. me too. And I thought that we were just being... I don't know, not aware of how to pronounce a name that... <laughs> I, I have a memory. Like, I shouldn't can... it be Berenstein? Right. But no, I guess not, because that's not how it's spelled. Berenstein. I, I can see in my mind's eye, from my childhood, S-T-E-I-N. Do you see what I mean? Even though it's like, never been that. I was saying one of those books last week. I mean, I've just yeah. looked okay, at it. Okay, right. See, right. We, always, we always say it, Berenstein Bears. Mm-hmm. Berenstein which is neither one of those spellings. How interesting, well, see, right? I've always said Baron Stain, but just thought really? that I was, ah. you know. Well, see, for country. me, I remember when I was a kid. <laughs> the wrong way. I remember when I was a kid always being, because pronunciation of words, because I always would was reading, you know, just like all of you guys, I was reading beyond my, my grade level. Sure. And so I would come across, my vocabulary was always larger. But I would learn these words by only reading them. So I kn- uh, there were a lot of words that I did okay. not know how, still do not know how to accurately pronounce. You and I because both. Because I've not heard them necessarily. <laughs> right. Right. Hmm. Um, and, so, and so I remember when I was a kid, always being conflicted about how I would say the Berenstein Bears or how it was trying to remember how it was spelled because I would, I remember thinking in my head that it was one way and then I would look at the book and it would be another way. Hmm. And so I remember that dilemma when I was a kid, but I still always said Berenstein Bears, Berenstein. Hmm. It was weird. Right. So <clears throat> one, of the, one of the ideas, one of the Reddit threads or forums, I'm sure, about this is the, is the idea of parallel universes or parallel dimensions. Oh. This is a real thing it's that people really hold, yeah. right? That maybe, in fact, there's a the veil between our dimension, right, and the dimension where Berenstein is spelled E-I-N is very thin, and sometimes mm. oh there's gosh. been, right? This is too much. How about just one more, just one more. Do you guys remember the movie from the early 90s starring... Um, Sinbad called yes. Kazam. I already know this one. You remember, know this don't one. you? You remember? I, I can see this. the VHS cover. I had this movie, Wasn't but it I didn't. Shazam. So, there's one called Shazam, uh, starring Shaquille O'Neal as right. a genie. Okay. Actually, okay. I might have that backwards. I have it here on my phone. I'm going to look it up two seconds. I mean, I know where this conversation ends. But right. The one, the one with Shaq like is the one that actually exists. The one, okay. the one with Shaq was called Kazam, 1996. Mm-hmm. However, Sinbad never starred no. in a genie film. So yeah. why do we think that? Why, in fact, I, is the question. Was there a reference in a, in another movie that was really popular? Very, very recently. Something? Very recently, like on funnyordie.com. Okay. Way, way too recently. He, he was, in fact, he was almost parodying the fact, the fact that, that people think this. Right. right. He, he did something like this. But yeah. So I have a side huh. gig at a comedy club. And um, he came to the comedy Sweet. club maybe six months ago. Nice. And I can't tell you how many people were like, oh, yeah, I loved him in... Whatever it's called. How about that? Really? And we just stopped saying that wasn't a thing. We were just like, yep, yeah, he was so great. great. He's awesome. You should definitely talk about that. I love doing that. It's like, oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I'm really wondering what else I'm incorrectly remembering. Well, one of the most infamous ones is Star Wars. Luke, I am your father. Luke, I am your father. Never. He never actually says, Luke. I am your father. Mm-mm. What is what is it that he actually says? I can't remember. Uh, Luke, I'm your daddy. Luke says he says I am your Yo, daddy. Yo, I'm, <laughs> I'm your sorry. daddy, son. <laughs> uh, Luke Luke says something to him, and Darth Vader corrects Luke and says, "You killed your father." And right. He says, "No, no, I am your father. I am your father." Search your that's, feelings. You know it is true. Oh, okay. And that's when he Luke starts screaming. No. Yeah. Right. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's probably 
Well, but well, obviously Mandela, the N- Nelson Mandela, d- mistakenly not dying. <laughs> That's a really or, weird know, sentence the way I'm way. saying yeah. it. Just really c- I promise <laughs> the Illuminati is not involved in this right. podcast. <laughs> That's probably to my knowledge, I, simply because it's named after him. But right. probably next in line to that would be the st- Star Wars. Sure, Luke, I am your father. Yeah. The Monopoly Man doesn't doesn't have a monocle. We must have read the same article. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have many. It's just blow my mind. I know yeah, it's it really crazy. Is. Yeah, he, I mean, all that I can think of is you know U.S. history facts that people Mm -hmm. sort of botch i guess Mm. like people always think that ben franklin was one of our presidents and he was got you right right yeah but i don't know if that's misremembering or Mm -hmm. just being a little ignorant of history (laughs) right you know because it's one thing i mean i can see how a song but actually i'm not convinced that it doesn't have of the world in it (laughs) <laughs> like I almost want to cue it up and listen to it. I know it. for sure. I mean, I'm sure that we could do that on the edit, but Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm singing it in my head well, and, and I'm not convinced. It, it, you want to, you want to finish the phrase because all through the rest of the but song. But I can hear him say it. Mm-hmm. That's so what's creeping I, me out. I know yeah. CC, I know. Like I can hear yeah. Freddie Mercury right himself. of the right of yeah. the and you can yeah. see him, you can yeah. even like we feel yeah. it so palpably, right. which is why people are like, well maybe it did happen. Just not on this. I'm, just not, I'm not convinced. Right? Yeah. Well, we'll have to look it up. Mark, I will definitely. Don't you worry. I'm going to look it up as soon as I can. Mark just reminded me to ask you guys, what does the, the witch in Snow White say to her mirror? Um, mirror, mirror on the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's, Who's the, the fairest, fairest of them all? all? Never. She doesn't actually say that. What is it she actually says? Magic says? mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Yeah. Magic mirror. So why do we do this? <laughs> like, know. is it just because it's been... But it hasn't even been passed down. I mean, there's digital record of this. Right. We could all go look at it. We could. Yeah. We could. Well, um, Sex in the City. It's right. Not, same article, it's my friend. Not, yeah, it's definitely mm-hmm. the same article. Mm-hmm. Sex in the City. It's not actually sex in no, the city. It's sex, it's sex and the city. And the sex city. and yeah. the city. But then there were, are pictures of merchandise that say sex in the city hmm. and sex and the city. Hmm. Hmm. So hmm. then it's, well, what it, which one is it? Which one is it? So um, we we encourage our viewers, listeners. We're not you can't yeah, see you anything. Can't see us. We, <laughs> which is really good for you, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Right now, it's really hot. No it's really, yeah. yeah, it's really hot, and it's a Monday morning. So we it's would, a really good thing you can't see us. We would love to hear. I hope this is appropriate to say. I would I I would be very interested when this is posted on social media. Like, Absolutely. Give, what are your know. thoughts on the Mandela effect? Where does it come from? Share your articles or your favorite Mandela. What ick. are things that you misremember? Right. Because that's that's what I was going to talk about. Sure. It's, you know things that we misremember. We were talking last time about season two of, no, I'm sorry, season three of American Horror Story with Stevie Nicks. Mm-hmm. Oh, I went yeah. back and watched it. Oh. I watched the entire season. I was already, I was already working my way back through nice. all of the series anyway. Um, and so when I got to Coven, it was perfect timing. Nice. So I went back and I rewatched it, and you know, it didn't feel nearly as contrived hmm. watching it the second time as I remember it feeling. Mm. Yeah. And we completely misremembered. How she's introduced. How about that? We we remember it's earlier in the season. Right? Um, it, it's actually we remembered the right time, but she's not sitting there playing the piano. Really, really, she does that later. That's how the, I remember um, it. Where they're burning the witch at the stake. Is that where she comes up? Um, I think it's around that same time. Okay, hmm. but. She's actually there in the house, and Misty Day, they bring her in to introduce her because Misty Day is now at the house. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, no, it's after that. Okay. Because. Like right after? It's like the next next episode okay. or okay. so. Because that happens still fairly early. I've watched this um, season three times just to try to like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's dedication, man. Yeah. That is dedication. I've started on, we're on episode two of Freak Show now because my husband has not Freak seen any. Freak Show is the best. What? That, that is one. unpopular opinion. Really? really? In, the, in this I room, hotel, I think. I think Hotel and Freak Show are my top two. Hotel is my favorite by far. Hotel is incredible. Ab- absolutely agree. You guys Murder must, House is my second. You must uh, both love television programs in which they very uh, they shoehorn singing in in a <laughs> gross and inauthentic way just to make oh, money. We and just get talked a, about as a how cash we're musical grab. theater <laughs> nerd over here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. People I didn't like Freak Show. People bursting out into song in the middle of regular life is not abnormal. I didn't like Freak <laughs> Show, but I love Evan Peters' voice. Have you watched uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend? I do. Yes. I was going to say, because you would love it. I love Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I don't love her. 
She drives me crazy. Really? I think she's so, so funny. I think she's hilarious. Yeah. But, like, the decisions that her character makes, oh, yeah, I'm she's just like, idiot. oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Right. Just stop. But that's I think one whole that point. people kind of misremember the name of it because it's not mm-hmm. my crazy ex girlfriend. Uh-huh. It's crazy, crazy ex girlfriend. I'm yeah. sitting over here saying, is, it, is are they talking about my crazy ex girlfriend, right? In fact, no. No. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy ex girlfriend. Which one? Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. Mark, can you put a rim shot in there? <laughs> Very nice. There we go. Very nice. <laughs> but so so Stevie Nicks, when we come in, when you when you are first introduced to her, of course, you know, you're introduced to her music earlier on. And the first reference you do get to her is the song Rhiannon playing on, okay. on, okay. on the radio in Misty Days. Yes. Shack. Okay. Right. Yes. okay. And so that is the first reference. Mm. But then after that, when you actually meet her, she's just standing in the house mm. waiting to meet Misty Day. She's not playing the piano so or anything. Yeah, in my head, it's completely different. Yeah. Now, there's another episode later on where she just is there at the house and she sits there and she plays Rhiannon and sings it for. No, it's not Rhiannon. She sings. She is playing that later. But then she actually sings a different song that I cannot remember the name what? of. What? Hold so, on. I'll yeah. this up right now. And then, then they have the music video for the final. Yes. That, yeah. that was every bit as contrived as I remember right. it being. This is not a good way to start off our week because I'm going to be leaving our recording session today being like, how trustworthy is my mind? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's just not. I don't feel like I should get behind the wheel of a car I mean, right now, actually. Well, <laughs> well there's, there's one thing that I always come back to. <laughs> so our awesome boss here Ruthie mm-hmm. um at the beginning of my career here when I just got into management um I would tell her things that we had you know talked about and she'd be like I have zero mm-hmm. recollection oh, yeah. of this and in my head I'm like how can you not remember this mm-hmm. you know? right sure so then she would always tell me you will get this way as well like mm. <laughs> give us some time mm. and you won't remember stuff too and I'm at that point now where people will tell me something that I agreed to. In fact, Mark mm-hmm. and I had the, had this exact thing last week because mm-hmm. they were building a display in Berea and he wanted money. And I have zero, zero recollection of even talking about this. But at least I know because now I'm like, you know, I probably said yes to this uh-huh. and just don't remember. Mm. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever you want to do is cool. Mm. Duly noted. <laughs> 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 Check that one off my list for the week. But no, I can I can I can completely relate. I remember I had um, my tonsils taken out a few years ago, and I had a conversation, a text, com- no, a phone call, with one of our coworkers here, and w- apparently I agreed to something. Mm-hmm. I still don't even remember the conversation. Were you under the influence of anesthetic? I was. Anesthesia. Pain meds. Pain meds uh-huh. Tonsils. Apparently, when you have your tonsils out as a kid, it's not that bad. But yeah. I can attest, when you have it out as an adult, yeah. oh my oh. God. Hmm. It was a full month before I was at, before I was completely pain-free. No kidding. A full month. Get that stuff done when you're kids, kids. Seriously. Okay. You have to. So yeah. just FYI, the other song that Stevie Nicks sings is Has Anyone Ever Written Anything About You? Hmm. That, thank you. Thank you. But... Again, trying to, you know, recall it in my head. It mm-hmm. was stop dragging my heart around. <laughs> How about that? Why would that even be a thing? Right. I don't know. I don't okay, so my speaking of Stevie Nicks, now. I have to. Okay, so I don't know if you had, you weren't in on this conversation, Brandon, or nor you, Mark. But I know you and I, Cece, you and I were talking with Ruthie last week about having like these really crazy, vivid dreams recently. Mm. Yes. Well, apparently. A lot of people had really crazy, vivid dreams at the end of the week last week. I'm, I, I absolutely, what for sure. What about you, Mark? For uh, sure. Brandon's, yeah? Okay. Wow. For sure. See, and I really believe it was because of the weather, mm. the change sure. in the weather, because mm. it had been kind of dry, and then suddenly we had all of this rain, yeah. and it was actually a little cooler, So, and it came in overnight. So mm. because of that, I really believe that it was be- that we all had had these crazy dreams. But speaking of Stevie Nicks, this is not a dream that I had here recently, but this is one of those dreams that I will always remember. And as a theater person, this is one of, you know, one of your nightmares. Mm. It's not being on stage naked. It's not nothing like that. (laughs) I dreamed that I was auditioning for, I want to say American Idol, but... Idina Menzel was the was the judge that I was auditioning for, Whoa. and I'm getting ready to. But somehow I made it through all of the preliminary auditions, all of the preliminary rounds, and I was getting ready to go on to the show 
for the televised auditions, and I still did not know what I was going to sing. <laughs> I right. was like, I had no idea right. what I was going to sing. And I'm ready to go out there, have the microphone in my hand, and I still don't know. And that was when I woke up. And oh, was I horrible. need to know what you sang, April. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's the thing. It haunted me for the entire next day. And finally, as I'm laying in bed and I get ready to fall asleep, all of a sudden I go, lady, that's it. <laughs> lady, that's what I would have sang. So lady off of Stevie Nicks' newest album. Wow. Nice. That's what I would have sang. All right. And I was like, okay, there we go. Now I'm like, I, that's not even the right kind of style of song. It's a great <laughs> song. and But that's as a... Dumb dream me. Dumb dream me, yeah. But that's what... And well, and... But the dream that I had last week, I was writing a play. And I don't know what the play was about other than the, there were vampires in there. But I remember that it was really good. Edward Cullen, <laughs> I really hope. And I, I remember, <laughs> I'm starting to think it might have been. Emmett. What'd you call him? Our Pat? Our Pat. Pat. He's so Pat. dreamy. But it was really, really good. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it was. And I can't remember anything about it. And I'm really kind of upset about that. I feel because like your first so dream is kind of a common dream. Like we all have this... Fail, version fail, of yeah, yeah. Mm. like again working um, comedy club mm -hmm. I'll have a dream where um, I'll have this full section of people and somehow I'm unable to tend to them at all mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. for or sure running I'm also a runner I have this dream all the time where in fact I had that dream last week um, where one leg is significantly mm -hmm. longer than the other mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking like a foot or two longer than the other. Wow. And I cannot run. Mm -hmm. Or like my body just won't mm -hmm. move in the way that one moves to run. And it's it's so scary when you actually go out to run because in your head you're just like, I can't do this because of what happened. In because my I dream. remember my leg is like this this one, le my right leg is two feet longer than the other one. I'm right. just going to drag it around. So join us next time on the podcast <laughs> when we'll be... <laughs> Continue our consciousness pioneering into the vast and ethereal realm of the human mind. Oh my gosh, well, that's, that's <laughs> Sorry. Kind of what we do. Yeah, yeah, can, for sure. Can you share, or do you remember your vivid dream? Can mm, can you share it? No, <laughs> the only thing I remember from from my vivid dreams is that they were vivid and impacting, and and they were dreams, and they were dreams, <laughs> and I was in my underwear. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I probably was. I was asleep. Uh, the, but but the common thread is that there was some. This is this is this is I don't eighty percent of the dreams that I have that I remember. Um, there's a, some kind of goal that goes unrequited mm -hmm. in my dream. There's some kind of thing I'm trying to get to, or object that I'm trying to attain, or place that I'm trying to arrive at, mm -hmm. at which I'm trying to arrive, and I can't. And and I never. Yeah. I spend the totality of the dream trying to obtain it or get there. Yeah. And I never do. This do is, all 35-year-olds have the same dream? I think all human beings have, that, I, I, have a version you know, of that dream, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, th I think you might be right. Yeah. I think you might be right. Are we all 35? I will be in like a month. I will be in on Friday. Oh, happy birthday, Brandon. I will Thanks, be 36 guys. in like a month. So. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, so yeah, basically we're all 35. <laughs> I expect my prank birthday cake, April. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Is it my turn? Am I up? I don't even know. I think actually... We quit that like a year ago, which is I sad. I know, but yeah. April and I used you to get each I other so continue. good. We so should. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. did. There was... Uh, the the first year... Well, the last one that I remember that Brandon got for me was just fantastic. <laughs> I... Uh, his birthday precedes mine, and so he has responsible... Well, used to be responsible for making sure that I had a cake, and once we realized that he... and he preceded me. It was very, very exciting for us because of the pranking. I was responsible for fixing your little red wagon. Yep, yep. Real good. I So <laughs> he bought, what did you buy? Brownie mix? Brownie mix, but I baked it for, I think, six hours. <laughs> 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 it Slow roasted brownies. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it was black. Yeah. And we were able, I was able to tip it out of the tin and oh, actually man. like bang it on the table. I remember and it did seeing not, this like, cake. But I had a fire extinguisher in the kitchen Six on the hours. counter just in case <laughs> for sure. Did you, so you meant to do that? Yes. Oh, for sure. It was like yeah. a prank because then, then in my defense, everyone who's listening should know there was in fact actually a real cake later. Yeah. Right. But this one was. That was, is oh, awesome. I had gotten you right before that because I switched with somebody so I can make sure that I had you. <laughs> because right before that, a few weeks, because our birthdays are a few weeks apart. Right. Um, I had gotten a one of those giant cookies. That's right. And I cut a slice out <laughs> of it and left the slice, but I made all the, I sliced it all up and then I took that what was left and just left a few crumbs in it 
and put it like <laughs> hid it in the oven That's or something, it. hoping that nobody turned the oven on. That's it. And left it on there and put it like a happy birthday, Brandon. Please don't eat. Um, <laughs> And I told Brandon that um, I apologized and I'm so sorry. Somebody had eaten his cake and he was, you know, you were a really great sport about it. You were like, oh, yeah, but okay. no, but it's inside, right. do you guys know the whole time I'm thinking, you know, that John Travolta, it's a really funny gif or gif. That's a comment. That's a, we can talk about that next time. Like the G in gigantic. Yeah. For yes. th- thank you. Gigantic. Uh, <laughs> in, from, from Pulp Fiction where he's kind of like looking, he's like lost and he's like looking back and forth <laughs> and he doesn't know where to go. <laughs> That was me on that day. I was kind of like, it was like sad and confused. <laughs> Yes. So we both got each other really, really, really well. <laughs> it was really fun. I really want to talk about the Gif or Jif next time. Just, just kill me. Yeah, right now. the yeah, brownies. Sure. Seriously, like I for sure were... set aside time on my <laughs> schedule <laughs> to, with a fire extinguisher just in case I almost burned my kitchen down to get you real good <laughs> I mean, that on is your birthday. It, that is. That is. We. I think that was the last year that we did the birthday things, and Sad I, I kind of maybe we say. killed it. <laughs> maybe we did. Burned but it alive was worth it. in my oven. It, it was worth all. it. I'm the one that killed it. Oh, you were the one that killed it. Right. <laughs> you, you like I really am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the terrible boss that was like, we're not doing that anymore. Okay. Horrible bosses. There's reasons. There are, there are reasons, sure there are and that's fine. That's reasons. fine. Yes, there are yes. good reasons. There are good, that's not fine. mean-spirited reasons. Sure, sure, sure. No. Of course. But that was, that was a lot of fun, and it was all, God, Brandon, you and I have been working together five years, oh, six years, coming up on six years. Yeah. 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 Coming up on six years doing this. And right on. Well, speaking of ruining birthdays, um, I want to end with talking about what made us cry last week. Oh, yeah. Man, because um, sort of to bring it back to where we started. Please another, do. Another um, guilty pleasure of mine is a show called Last Chance You. Have you all heard of the show before? No. Last Chance You. No. It's a Netflix show. It follows this community college football team in Scuba, Mississippi. Sorry. I'm all right. Laughing. Okay. Scuba. A community of 700 people. Uh-huh. Right. So what this school does is kids how that have been kicked they? off of Division I teams, and okay. I'm talking from the Big Five, so like Penn mm-hmm. State, Florida State, okay. Ohio State, all the big football schools, um, if they have messed up in some way, um, in fact, the kid who played for Florida State who was caught on video punching a girl in a bar, Whoa. do you remember that? Oh, a few no. years ago, it was a huge deal. Whoa. Well, they gave him a chance, and he uh. played there. Oh. So that's where the whole last chance you thing comes into okay. play. So this is reality. So this is it's a reality, it's a reality show. show. It's a reality yes. thing. Okay. This really exists. It's a Netflix it. docu series. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so I talked last time about how I cried at you know Kentucky basketball mm-hmm. games. <laughs> so so you get so invested in these kids' stories, and yes, they have done things that are wrong, you know, mm-hmm. but here they are trying to make good of it. And something that really gets to me is. They're all, they have this, um, like, school coach, if you will. Okay. So she makes sure that they go to class, and they take all their quizzes, and they do all their homework, and they take tests and do all those things, because they have to pass, or they're done. Right. Like, totally done. Like, there's no there's their second last chance, chance after this. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So she's often the first person that tells them that she believes in them, in a in an arena other than sports. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh-huh. So I won't give too much away about this, because... I'm sure I've given a compelling argument to watch the show. Yeah. Um, The first episode of season two is a very touching episode because half the team can't play because of something that happened in season one. Mm. So it's a bunch of freshmen and a bunch of transfers and they go out and they almost win the game. They all go ahead and spoil it. They don't win the game, Mm -hmm. but I mean, it's like a last second Uh two point conversion that doesn't work out. So they interview the dean of some college there, and he is an 80-year-old man, and he is sobbing. I mean, I'm talking just sobbing about how these kids tried so hard, and it's just such an incredible feat and all this stuff. So there's me lying in bed just (laughs) boo-hooing. All right. All right. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, me and this 80-year-old man crying over sports, but, you know. Wow. There's something about seeing somebody a little further down the road than you. Very emotional. Yeah. Like it yeah. taps into like, uh, like, how many conversations have you had with somebody? Well, I've only seen my dad cry. I've only seen my daddy cry three <laughs> times. This is me. Yeah. This is a true story about me and my life that I'm saying in this accent for some reason. Right. <laughs> but it's so like it really taps into something like super primal and, vi- and, and vulnerable and. 
Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah. If he's that moved, him, you know, twice my age or three times my age, right. you, you know what I mean? And he cares about the similar thing that I care about. I don't know. I'm, That's yeah. what gets me, I think. I'm moved hearing about, about it. I this last week. Uh-huh. Is that, I mean, he and I are probably polar opposites in every single way, hmm. but both were moved by this right on. particular thing. Right on. Mm-hmm. Right on. Right on. For sure. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sympathetic crier. Mm. I, I cry. I'm also a sympathetic puker but that's oh, a whole other no. story but i but i am yeah, a sympathetic well. crier my and, next two activities um, for the next podcast oh yeah yeah <laughs> so my husband <laughs> puke and rally just uh, <laughs> and cry and puke again <laughs> oh dear god <laughs> that's just gross <laughs> so my husband does not cry he just do- he just doesn't mm. he's just not a crier you know he'll express his emotion his mo- emotions in other ways he just is, just does not cry it's not like there's that part of him is stunted or anything he just doesn't cry mm. um when we had to put our cat down oh, because he yeah. got oh, very sick yeah, man, same. he started yeah. mm sobbing yeah, there's no way and that was and i was trying so hard to be mm. strong because this was his cat and when that happened when he started sobbing i that was that was it i might cry that right now was the that was it yeah i'm like i'm like i'm gonna cry over foster i want to apply the mandela effect to the last maybe 90 seconds of this conversation and pretend that none of it happened because if not i'm gonna leave really sad Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we into things that make us. Cry. I'm just kidding. That was me trying to. That <laughs> no. was that was just me trying to shoehorn my topic back into the podcast. But uh, well, things misremembered. It's true. It's about my time, everybody. You feel like wrapping up? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. This well, it's been fun. Amazing. Hashtag absolutely. I say that so often. Absolutely. <laughs> that was a little Bob Hoskins from the fabulous 1991 oh, film Hoskins. Hook. I know, right? Uh, and also Roger uh, Rabbit. And Roger Rabbit, for sure, yeah. Yes, I right? forgot he was in that. Yeah. And Can't the Kristen Stewart, K. Stu, Snow White, it was his last role, the Before the Huntsman. Huh. It wasn't a very good role, but he was in it. Oh, okay, so not to leave us with anything about, about tears, but Snow White, speaking of that. Okay, so I read this thing. Magic mirror on the wall. Uh, well, that. But I read this thing that if Snow White really actually had skin as white as snow, red, lips as red as a rose, and hair as black as night... She would look like a vampire. Right yeah. on. Or like right? a zombie, and so, and sunken so, face. Listen, if she was a vampire, that would explain like why she was able to sleep without aging oh. and was able to sleep for forever, convince seven dwarves to live with her and take care of her. <laughs> you know? Brandon's like, why the, why, she would, why she the would evil, see... queen, evil queen wanted to get her heart so that she, Stop it. So that she knew she was actually dead? She would see no reflection so in the, the magic Illuminati mirror on the wall. The yeah, I know. So, <laughs> so the Illuminati are the ones who are just who are turning it and making it like a good story. That's what oh, it is. Like a children's right story. On. That's what it is. That's mm. what the Illuminati came in. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Dang I read that. Illuminati. I know. Get you every Dang time. It, <laughs> Everybody gets one. <laughs> Illuminati. All right, that's our time. Yeah, guys, thanks. Yes, see you next time. Bye. Bye.